Okay, here I'm going to describe the basics of experimental design. And when you com come across a problem, you want to design an experiment, these are the general steps you should follow. So first step is to generate a hypothesis. Start by simply asking a question. And then complete some background research, and then generate the hypothesis. So we're talking about generating that hypothesis. You don't just start right with that. <clears throat> you want to ask a question first, and then complete some background research. And you can see that we're getting here, we're going to test the hypothesis, generate new data, do you agree or not agree, and then work from there. But that first step is kind of identify a problem, gather some data, and then generate that hypothesis. It's got to come from somewhere. Now, once we develop that, we want to look at an, an independent and dependent variable. So here we're starting with the independent variable. This is a variable often termed, uh, or denoted as x, whose variation does not depend on that of another what scientist changes or what changes on its own. So a way to think about this is the independent variable is, for example, the fertilizer. If you're looking at growing a plant, uh, the independent variable could be the amount of fertilizer added. So that would be an example of independent variable. Contrast to that, we look at dependent variable. Well, it's a variable often noted by y, whose value depends on that of another, what is being studied or measured. So if our independent variable is the fertilizer, our dependent variable would be the height or how big the plant is growing. So again, going back for a second, independent variable, uh, what the scientist is changing, for example, the amount of fertilizer, dependent variable would be the amount that the plant is growing. So again, a lot of students kind of confuse those two. That should be a pretty clear way to uh, think about them in at least one example. Then that experiment, a, what is an experiment? Well, it's a scientific procedure to undertaking to make a discovery, test hypothesis, or demonstrate a known fact. So it's kind of a broad definition there, uh, but it's kind of performing those tests, and that could be, you know, in a sterile lab here, or it could be looking at can you generate uh, power from a carrot. Now, there's a control group in good experiments. So when we think about uh, control groups, uh, it's a set of uh, that does not receive a treatment by the researchers. So in this case, taking with the plant example. If we're looking at adding fertilizer, the control group would be the set of plants that does not receive any fertilizer. The goal of this is to provide a benchmark to measure how other variables perform, kind of getting into that separate group. And we may see uh, in drug studies, a placebo or sugar pill, one that doesn't have the uh, chemical substance in there, again, to act as that benchmark to then act for comparison there. Constants are different than control groups. Constants are portions of the study or experiment that does not change. So, for example, pi is the same number regardless. So a constant in our plant growing example could be the size of the container. We don't want to have some plants growing in small pots and some growing in large areas or outdoors and indoors. We want to have constants. We want to have the media that they're growing in, we want to have the container they're growing in, the environmental conditions as constant as possible across all plants, allowing the potential for fertilizer variables to be shown. Then we have different trials that we may go through and do. So this is the number of times a protocol is followed. A lot of times an experiment's not just done once and that's it. Trials are, okay, we may grow plants in a greenhouse. We could grow them for, you know, the month in the summer months. We grow them in the, and repeat that in the winter months, keeping conditions the same. And oftentimes these experiments are repeated, which we refer to as different trials. So you may see the average of trials, average of experiments. You can see here some uh, small tubes, again, different trials, repeating that again. Collect and analyze the results. Well, collecting data is in easy format uh, initially. Then we need to change when it's published for others to see. So analysis can take on many different forms, which determine on the questions asked or the purpose of the research. Ideally, these should be determined before the research is concluded. So you don't want to necessarily be determine the questions asked and the purpose of the research at the end. You kind of want to have that at the beginning and kind of that's driving the entire process there. Uh, lastly, uh, the conclusion is summarize how your results support or contradict your original hypothesis. Include key facts from your background research to help explain the results as needed. So that conclusion is kind of taking that information, taking what you've seen, taking some things uh, that you may have taken notes on, and kind of developing that conclusion, summarizing those results so that someone when reading your study can kind of see uh, what you were able to find and then potentially build on that in the future.